Hello everyone, back to you to today's second video. Going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's second video. Uh, day 10 will take us to around the 24th of September and uh, we'll be able to extend out beyond that the extended GFS and ECM ensembles maybe around two around a couple of weeks. Have a look at CFS V2 at the end of video for the next four weeks. That can take us into uh, early October, of course. Begin with a few pictures uh, that we can share with you as well, so I'll get on with all of that very shortly. Just to say that the first video released today was uh, the second Winter 2020-21 Update Part 2. That's got all of the analogues for this uh, Winter uh, Update uh, within it, and we're looking at uh, August and Summer Rainfall uh, data, uh, Rainfall to uh, August, you know, Rainfall um, and uh, and Summer Rainfall data uh, for, for the Winter Update. So, so yeah, I'll get along the Winter Update updates page for you this evening probably around seven eight o'clock there'll be a written summary that goes uh, that goes with that one uh, as well i'll get that up for you uh, tonight uh, very busy weekend at Gazovins, by the way. So, uh, so we did the, did part one of the second winter update yesterday. Seemed to go down really well. So, so everybody seemed to enjoy that. And we also live stream had an epic live stream uh, yesterday uh, at six o'clock in the evening. Ran for around an hour and ten minutes. Uh, we uh, live streamed Patel Peng's winter 2020 21 analogs uh, forecast with that one. And uh, and uh, we picked I think around 140. 145 concurrent viewers, so it, it was a really big live stream. Thank you so much to everybody uh, for checking in and, uh, and being loyal to me and sticking with me during uh, that live stream. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who stayed with me uh, for, for yesterday's live stream. Thank you so much to all of you uh, for doing that. Right, so let's get on with the uh, with the um, uh, with the video then, and we're going to start off with this uh, picture sent through by Liam Kenwood showing uh, Maidstone sunset. Uh, thank you so much to Liam for sending that for absolutely gorgeous uh, picture of a May of a Maidstone sunset on Saturday night. Thank you, Liam, uh, for emailing that to me. Got just a few to share with you on the Gaz Web. It's Discord. Uh, so this one posted uh, around a week ago by Jack99 from uh, Cumbria, driving around through Cumbria. Uh, nice uh, nice uh, image there. Thank you, Jack, for sending that one through. Uh, this one sent through by uh, Jeffers Craft uh, on the west coast of America and California. So uh, showing the haze being caused in California by the wildfires. The, the current going in a big, big season uh, of, uh, of wildfires this season. And uh, this one shows it a little bit better, actually, the, the sort of haze within uh, the sky that's, uh, that's sitting over California, of course, by those wildfires. It's been an extremely hot summer on the western side of America and uh, California having big, big wildfires. Uh, another one from Jeffers Craft again, showing the showing the sun within the haze. Actually, that's a, that's a fantastic picture. Thank you, Jeffers, for showing that. You can see how that sort of smoke is just sitting over uh, over parts of California at the moment. And uh, yeah, the sun looking very very hazy, but also very very hot and dry with that sunshine uh, as well. This one from Weather Time Lapses uh, Daily. So uh, this is a sunrise. I'm not sure where. The, where where the time lapses daily is that's a nice sunrise picture from earlier on in the week and this one from Shryan uh, from Shryan uh, Bruin saying uh, better than any day in July or August over in Dublin so uh, yeah gorgeous blue sky and back to sunshine there over weekend thank you so much everybody for sharing their uh, weather pictures if you'd like to have weather pictures featured within videos then uh, please email them to us at gazwebs.gmail.com you can post them to our dear Discord or on the comment box at uh, Gav's Web Events. And you can also share with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. And uh, we will feature a few of your web pictures in the videos uh, every Monday. Thank you so much to everybody for doing that. Right, look at all this lot then. Uh, this is what's going on in the tropical Atlantic. Look at this. Now, where do we start? with this where do we start so i suppose we probably better start with the yellow x's haven't we so we've got uh, got a yellow x just here 
That is, I can't ever remember seeing the Tropic Atlantic and, like, the Gulf are quite as active as this, I have to say. I can't remember seeing it quite as active as this over the past few years. It's absolutely incredible how much we've got going on uh, right now. So, anyway, let's deal with this yellow X. That one is Disturbance 1. There's just a 0% chance of cycle information in the next few hours and a 10% chance in the next five days. Uh, right, we've also got another yellow X over here. Uh, just on the coast of Africa. That one is disturbance free. Uh, so it's a top of wave that's moving off the coast of, uh, of Africa, bring disorganised showers and thunderstorm activity. Uh, so it's only got a 10% chance of cyclone information in the next two days. We've got a 40% chance uh, in the next five days. So 10% in the next two, 40 in the next five. So it looks like that one's gonna that one could develop as well into uh, into another uh, sort of tropical storm type thing. Uh, we've got Rene up here. Let's have a look at Rene. That's uh, tropical depression. Rene, I think tropical depression. Rene is giving maximum stable winds of thirty miles per hour with a minimum set pressure of one thousand eleven millibars, moving very slowly at three miles per hour westwards. Clicking on Rene. Uh, going to go post-tropical anytime, going to become a post-tropical depression anytime. It looks like that's going to be the end of it. So I think really Rene is pretty much at the end now. I don't think we have to worry too much more about Rene. It's going to be gone by Wednesday. Right, where to next? Uh, we've got Sally. Okay, so we've got uh, Tropical Storm Sally just here in the uh, Gulf of Mexico. So that's giving maximum state winds of 60 miles per hour with a minimum set pressure of 996 millibars, moving west-northwest at 9 miles per hour. Clicking on Sally. And uh, going here shows what Sally's forecast to do. So Sally's forecast to become a hurricane uh, tomorrow. At the moment, Tropical Storm Sally's just there. Uh, this will become Hurricane Sally tomorrow, just off the coast, uh, the Gulf Coast of the United States. And then Hurricane Sally will slam into the Gulf Coast, uh, probably uh, somewhere between like Louisiana and, uh, and uh, Alabama. So slamming onto the Gulf Coast just here as a hurricane, and then becoming uh, a, a tropical storm of tropical depression as it moves further inland and starts to lose its energy. Uh, let's have a look at discussion so we can see uh, what uh, the winds are forecast to do with this. So uh, at its peak, it looks like this is going to be a Category 1 hurricane. Uh, peak of maximum stable winds at 85 miles per hour. Right, uh, so where to uh, next? It's going to take some time to get through all of this. So uh, let's carry on. Uh, we've got 21 just here. We've got Tropical Depression 21, giving it maximum sustained winds of 35. Five miles per hour, the minimum set pressure of 1,009 millibars, uh, moving northwards at six miles per hour. Clicking on 21, uh, we can see that 21 is forecast to have a tropical storm any time and then go into a post tropical depression and dissipate by the end of the week. Uh, right, so what to look at next? Teddy, let's look at Teddy. Uh, tropical Storm Teddy is currently in max sustained winds of 40 miles per hour, a minimum set pressure of 1,004 millibars, moving west and northwest was at 14 miles per hour. Clicking on Teddy, we can see that this is forecast to become a major hurricane. So, uh, Tropical Storm at the moment going to become a hurricane by tomorrow, becoming a major hurricane at the end of the week. A major hurricane Teddy will be uh, with us in the Tropical Atlantic by the end of the week. Uh, and then finally, we've got uh, Hurricane Paulette just here, uh, giving uh, maximum sustained winds at of 90 miles per hour, clicking on uh, Paulette, we can see, uh, I'm going here, we can see that Paulette is uh, also forecast to become a major hurricane, so you're going to have two major hurricanes going on uh, this week, Paulette becomes a major hurricane tomorrow, uh, moving up to category 3 hurricane status, uh, and then going back down to a trouble storm by Friday, it's all happening, this is peak hurricane season, uh, now, September is always a very active month, but I can't remember seeing the, the Tropical Atlantic quite as active as this. I can't remember seeing it 
quite uh, like this, where so much uh, is going on. Obviously, the two the two majors are Paulette and Teddy. They're the two majors. But we've also got Sally, which is going to become a hurricane as it moves on to the Gulf Coast of, of the United States as well. Uh, and uh, and so we're going to keep a close eye. I've also got this yellow X just here, as I said. That might develop into something as well later on in the week. So it's all happening. It's all going on. We'll be keeping you updated about all of these developments at Gasweb in the coming days. Central temperature uh, for September so far is looking like this. So provisionally, we're standing at 15.0. That's an anomaly of 0 0.8 degrees above average. That is provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 13th of September. Turning into quite a quite a warmish month. That's going to get uh, an increase as well over the coming few days because today, tomorrow, going to be quite hot. And then temperatures will gradually slide a little bit later on in the week, but still staying generally uh, quite warm. Before I just have a very quick look at September in terms of the CT over the past few years. So, uh, the average for September in terms of the CT, this is at Gazwebis, by the way, CT page at Gazwebis. Uh, so, uh, the average for September uh, for the 61 to 1990 average uh, is 13.6. And the average for September with the 81 to 2010 average, the more recent and warmer average, is 14.0. So, so, they're the two that we uh, compare to. So, last September had a central temperature of 14.3. So, it's just a little bit warmer uh, than, you know, just a little bit more average. Actually, close to, uh, with 81 to 10, it's like very close to average. It was a little bit warmer than average compared to 61 to 1990. Before that, I have a couple of cooler Septembers in uh, 2018 and 2017. They're down in the 13th. But our last really warm, our last hot September was in 2016 with a CT of 16.0 uh, in uh, September 2016. And our last really cool September was in 2015 with a CT of of 12.6. Generally, anything above 15 is like a very warm to hot September. So any, any September that comes out the CT at or above 15.0, I would class that as a very warm to hot September. So you had one of those in uh, 2014, had another one of those in 2011. Between that, 2012 and 2013 are cooler with the CT in the 13s. So you see, we've had a lot of variability with September actually over the past year. September does have a reputation of being really warm, but that reputation actually goes back more to the late 1990s and early 2000s where we did have lots and lots of really warm September. Actually over the past decade, September has tended to be, uh, you know, tended to be a lot more variable uh, really. So so we have 2010 uh, uh, around average at 13.8. We had a very warm September in 2011. A much cooler September in 2012. 2013 is about average. 2014 is very warm. 2015 is very cool. 2016 16 is is hot. Uh, 2017 about average. 2018 about average, but but cool compared to like 2016. And then last last year 2019 just a little bit above average. So September has reverted to being a rather more variable month actually, uh, as opposed to being continuously hot all the time like it was in the late 1990s and into the early to middle uh, 2000s. Uh, we wait to see where this September is going to come out. I think it's probably going to be above average. But it'll depend, uh, you know, wait and see how above average uh, it is. And time will tell. We, we'll be keeping you updated about that in the coming days and next couple of weeks, of course. Uh, these are the 500 mm height and flow charts from Penn State University for the next week to 10 days. We've got the ECMWF on the top and the GFS is on the bottom. So 500 millibars is now in that high pressure, low pressure. I've been moved around by jet stream running above. Red extrapolates high pressure, blue to low pressure. You can see that with the ECM in the 7 to 10 day time frame, we've got a nice area of above average height sitting right over top of the country. Nice ridge of high pressure there. Low pressure to the north. Jet streams pushing northwards as well. So the ECM is keeping things mainly dry, anti-cyclonic and settled as we go into the 7 to 10 day uh, time frame. So high and dry with the ECM. The GFS is very similar. It's a little bit more active with the Atlantic, lower pressure out to the northwest, higher pressure sitting over to the east of the country, just putting a little bit of pressure on that ridge, just putting a little bit of pressure on the ridge, but still basically anti cyclonic So both of those models are still pretty high pressure dominating in the 7 to 10 day time frame. 
Uh, bees of a GFS, upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles. Next couple of weeks, we're at London at Old West Central today. So the red line is the 30-year upper air temperature average. You can see that uh, temperature is going to be peaking tomorrow, somewhere between around 15 and 20 degrees at 850 HPA. So it's so really warm uh, to hot down in the southeast, right? We're up into the low 30s Celsius, depending on sunshine amounts, uh, of course. And then just a very slow and gradual decline over the next week or so. And until we get to like the final week of September and then we do see the decline in the upper air temperatures accelerating a bit for the final week of September we start to lower those upper air temperatures and actually by the closing days of September we go a little bit below average I think, we go slightly below average in the closing days of September. Precipitation wise can be loads of dry weather uh, in the next week, barely any uh, measurable rainfall at all, looking more unsettled through the last week of September so, so yeah uh, cooler and also much more unsettled for the last week of September with the GFS ensembles. Could that be like the start of a transition into autumn? Could that be starting to transition us into autumn through the last week of September? Uh, temperature anomalies from the 14th to 22nd of September are going to be uh, warmer than average. It's a warmer than average week coming up. Precipitation anomalies from the 14th to 22nd of September are going to be very significantly drier than average as high pressure will be in control. This is the latest wind flow map from earthnorschool.net showing uh, that high pressure is in control of the weather. We've got high pressure dominating uh, the weather over and to the east of the country and to the south as well with the jet stream and the upper level winds being pushed uh, to the north and to the west of the country also. Uh, moving over here, that is of course going to be uh, Paulette just there. That uh, disturbance or that circulation just there is is Paulette. There's Sally uh, just there, by the way, in the uh, in the Gulf of Mexico. That's Tropical Storm Sally. Going to become Hurricane Sally. That one is Paulette. And these are all of the other disturbance areas. I think that's Teddy just there. These are all of that's Rene just there. These are all of our other disturbance areas. So much going on in the tropical Atlantic. It really is quite remarkable what's happening uh, there. But the biggest disturbance, of course, is this one. It's Paulette uh, just here, and that's going to become a major hurricane. Uh, very briefly, by tomorrow, Teddy becomes a major hurricane uh, towards the end of the week. Uh, right, so this other UK Met is looking uh, for Thursday. So on Thursday, high pressure is dominated weather. We do change the wind direction. So we change wind direction from a hot southerly, but we've got at the moment to, to like a cooler easterly as we go through to the second half of the week. Into Friday, then on into Saturday and Sunday. Again, high pressure dominates weather sitting over to the north country, low pressure to the south. Winds coming in from an easterly direction. So, so yeah, the temperature begins to lower. The temperature lowers down as we move through uh, the end of week into weekend, but still a lot of dry weather with high pressure in control. This low over France and this gate is going to try to move heavy showers up into the south, but how successful it is remains to be seen. This is how the GFS is looking uh, for Thursday. So again, high pressure over to the east of the country. Winds are coming in from an easterly direction. Into weekend, high pressure remains in control of weather, bringing lots of dry and fine weather. Low pressure is to our south. Into the early part of next week, again, low pressure to the south southwest, high pressure to the north northeast. He's trying to go more unsettled, but again, it's really struggling to do so. And even through much of next week, I think many northern and east areas can expect a lot of dry weather. In the west, there will be some showery rain at times. So you get to day 10, which is Thursday, the 24th of September, a trough is moving in from off the Atlantic. That could be the trigger for some heavy showers uh, by then. But very quickly, we start to go back into high pressure again. This is uh, the remains of Teddy, I think just here, that's the main remains of major hurricane Teddy uh, there, and that's sort of steering this area of high pressure towards us so as we go towards the closing days of September this GFS run anyway uh, ring flakes the ridge once again we have high pressure sitting over and to the east country on Wednesday the 30th of September, last day of the month as far as we can go with the GFS now is to Wednesday the 30th of September lots of dry, fine and warm weather GM looks like that, again high pressure is in control of the weather through, through like the rest of this week into weekend as well. Uh, and then we get a bit of an attack from the northwest with the GEM. So we go into next week and low pressure begins to push in from the northwest. That will bring us autumnal conditions with showers or longer spells. Break. Obviously that is very different to what uh, to what the GFS is 
show emo uh, for next week. But the GM wants to bring us autumnal weather next week. And then we've got the ECM also looking anti-cyclonic with high pressure over the country on Thursday. That re sticks around the country through the weekend and into the early part of next week uh, as well. Heading up towards day 10, just some signs that ECM starting to begin to weaken the ridge, begin to break down the ridge a little bit and try to turn us a bit more unsettled, a little bit more showery by day 10. And this is a rainfall forecast based on that ECM run from Tometio.com. Let's rattle through this very quick because it's going to be a lot of dry weather over the next few days. Some showery bursts in the north and northwest, but a lot of dry weather uh, to come. Into like uh, into next week, so then we're starting to get some showers breaking out in the south. as moving up towards day 10. There's a few showers breaking out in the south. But even then, the emphasis really is on a lot of dry weather. These are the options that are on the table within the ECM ensembles today for day 10, which gets us to the 24th. 4th of September. 15 members of the ECM ensembles with low pressure to our north and northwest. Winds are coming in from a westerly direction. Uh, 13 with low pressure over and to the east of the country. Winds are in from the north with that. 8 with low pressure to the northeast. High pressure to the northwest. Winds are in from a northwesterly direction. Another 8 with low pressure right over top of the country. And 7 uh, which does include the operational run, by the way. That's what we just been looking at with high pressure to our northeast. So that's an anticyclonic option. But actually, going through that, it looks as though the ECL and Summers are favouring autumnal weather by day 10. And the operational run is not particularly well supported. You know, it's warmer and drier, but it's not particularly well supported by the ECM ensembles, actually. So it could be, but by the time we get through to day 10, we are moving into autumnal weather. In two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Getting us to the 29th of September, pretty much to the end of the month. 14 members of the ECM ensembles have high pressure over top of the country. Number 14 have low pressure over top of the country. 10 have low pressure coming in from the Atlantic and over the country. 8 with low pressure to the north, high pressure to the south. And then 5 with low pressure to the to the east, high pressure to the west, and winds are in from the north. Generally, I think a little bit of an autumnal, a little bit more of an autumnal flavour to the weather as we're coming into this last week of September. And then lastly, we've got the CFS V2. So these are 500 mm of our heights breaking down to week periods. The first week period takes from the 14th, 20th of September. The coming week has high pressure over top of the country. Lots of dry, fine and warm weather involved with that. Uh, week 2 is going to be the 21st, 27th of September. Low pressure to the north. High pressure is out to our west. Winds are in from a westerly direction uh, with that one. Uh, week 3 is going to be, let's have a look at it. Week 3 is going to be the 28th of September to the 4th of October, low pressure to the north northwest, high pressure to west southwest, winds sort of in from a westerly direction, rather showery uh, with that, and rather cool as well. And then week four is going to be the 5th to be 11th of October, with high pressure to our south and also to our west. Winds are sort of coming up from a west southwesterly direction. So quite dry uh, there, back to dry, quite dry weather, uh, particularly so for the south, and pretty mild, I would have thought. Uh, temperature anomalies for week one, the 14th, 20th of September, warmer than average. It's going to be a warm week uh, to come. Week two, temperature anomalies go cooler than average from the 21st, 27th of September. That one is below average. Week three is near normal, 28th of September, 4th of October, near normal for temperature anomalies. Then week four goes warmer. It's a fifth to the 11th of October. That goes slightly above average. Uh, week one rainfall anomaly from the 14th, 20th of September, drier than average. Going to be a drier than average week coming up. Week two uh, rainfall anomaly from the 21st, 27th of September. That one is normal to a little bit on the drier than average side. Week three, 28th of September, 4th of October, in normal rainfall. And week four, 5th to the 11th of October, is again uh, near normal for rainfall. Uh, finally, if you're enjoying the uh, videos of the content on the channel at the moment, please can you uh, click like on the videos to let YouTube know you're enjoying them. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Make sure you tell your friends about Gals Weather Vids. And uh, let us know in the comments what you think about all of the content. We are getting very close now, or getting ever closer, to 7,500 subscribers. So I think we've got to put on around 50 or 60 subscribers to get to around 7,500. 
500. When we get to 7,500 subscribers, we will be able to say that we are beginning the grind to 8K subs then. So that's going to be very interesting, isn't it? See how quickly we can get to 8,000 uh, subscribers. It'll be a lot of fun to see how uh, that works out. But yeah, we'll just see how it goes. But please subscribe to the channel if you're new and uh, then, uh, then you will be able to see future weather updates. Thank you so much to everybody for uh, for doing that. And I say thank you so much to all of you uh, for the support over this weekend, particularly so during uh, yesterday's live stream. Right, so that's it for today's videos. I'll get the uh, I'll get part two of the second winter update onto winter updates page. Uh, I'll get that up tonight for you, and I'll be rinsing it goes about as well. So if you watch the video on demand, either at the website or at the channel, and you're about to have a read of the written summary tomorrow. Uh, we've got the ECM Dev 30 day look out coming up, and we'll also have a 10 to 14 day video update for you tomorrow as well. But uh, for today's videos, that's all for now, and thanks for watching.